Hi, and welcome to 3dmotive.com. My name is Stephen G. Wells, and I'm a senior character artist. Uh, in today's little tips and tricks video, we're going to take a look at noise. All right, so I'm just going to click our simple tool, and we're going to start with a plain 3D. Let's go ahead and just draw that onto our canvas. I'm just left clicking and dragging out onto the canvas. I'm going to hit T to enter edit. Let's go ahead and make this a polymesh 3D, or else we can't do anything with it. And let's subdivide it right now. It's uh, only a thousand polygons. Let's go ahead and subdivide it. I'm just doing Control D. So what about a million polygons? A little over a million polygons. That's fine. That's what we need. All right. First thing I'm going to do before we show off noise is I need to create a sculpted surface in here. So let's go ahead. Let's drop down in subdivisions. We'll, we'll do Shift D, Shift D. We're now at only 66,000 polygons, if you'll notice. And I'm going to go ahead and get down to my clay build up tool. And I'm just going to start etching out, just etching something out. I don't, I don't know what I'm etching out specifically. I'm just going to have some fun. I'm going to hold my Alt key so this way I'm uh, scratching into the surface, as you can see. And let's do build that up. Now I'm going to hold down, etch that in. I'm going to smooth it. I'm going to hold my Shift key down. And that's smoothing that all down a little bit. Okay, there we go. All right, so I'm going to now step it up in subdivision surfaces. I'm now back up to the one million polygons. As you can see, it's it's an interesting formation. Nothing really special though. All right, so if we go to if we go to surface, which is under the surface palette right here, see this surface? There's this noise modifier. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and click that noise. Now, as you can see, it brings up our, our little a view of our little uh, uh, square. For the scale, let's go ahead and just ramp up the scale some. Now, as you can see, as the scale grows larger, the uh, deformations scale into bigger sizes. Okay, so like that right now looks like a, not a bad size at all. The strength, of course, if we turn the strength to zero. And then start to go into positive. You can really amp it out. If you go back down to zero and start going to the negative, it's the same thing. It's just a slightly different way it computes that. Okay, but for now, I think I'm going to go ahead and settle for 0 0.0009 strength. I'm going to leave the default. This is the the um, slider that you can turn on. It's the curve where we can turn on and change how we affect the particular. Uh, patterns in the noise, but right now I'm just going to leave it as its default, and I'm going to click OK. Now that really did a nice job of creating a nice rocky surface. Okay, That looks like a really nice, believable surface. Okay, Alright, but what we might want to do, I'm going to go ahead and change this material. I'm going to, I, I just left click on the material and I'm going to change it to this gray. There we go. Now what I think I want to do is I'm going to hit uh, Shift D, Shift D, Shift D. Oh, I'm sorry, hold on. What we actually first need to do is I need to apply this to the mesh. There we go. All right, so Shift D, Shift D, Shifty. All right. As you can see, we it's really gotten pixelated because we've really downgraded the amount of polygons we have to be able to create these details, and that's fine. Uh, I have no problem with that. What I want to do now, though, is I want to create some areas uh, that are really going to help enhance uh, some of our rock-like details. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some masking. The fun thing about masking is you can do a number of different things. Like if I hold down my Control key. Okay, I'm ready to mask. I can now just mask. In fact, we've done a, a quick tips and tricks tutorial on how to do masking. It's pretty simple. As you can see, I can just mask. As long as I'm holding my control key down and using one stroke, I can mask all of that. I can then, of course, blur that mask if I just click on the mask itself. Okay. Or one of the fun things is I can hold down my control key. I can change my stroke from freehand to a drag rectangle. And I can change my alpha to say this, alpha 8, it comes standard with 
ZBrush. Now what happens is, as you can see, when I create my masking, I'm clicking and dragging, it's kind of like a spotty kind of thing. And that's exactly what I want to try and do with this. Okay, So I'm just going to click and drag and click and drag and click and drag until I get something that I like. Okay, And we'll do a couple over here. All right, let's go ahead and ramp this back up to our uh, highest subdivision. And I'm going to go ahead and invert the mask. I'm going to hold down my control key and just snap in the background. That can, that converts our mask or inverts our mask. Okay. We can now go back to our noise. Let's go ahead and just keep it at that. We're just going to keep it as it was. I like it. See how it's graded it out now a little bit. The fun thing is, is I can now con continue to click this apply to mesh. And as you can see, it actually changes. Let's do Control Z. Check this out. So here you've got, you know, all these nice uh, realistic rock uh, crenellations, etc. But I can now go ahead and do it apply to mesh again, and I can get something slightly alien with that, like an alien world. Or you could imagine you could do puckered skin this way, etc. So let's go ahead, and I'm going to clear my mask. I'm going to hit P for perspective. And that's actually a pretty cool, pretty easy way to create realistic rock-like surfaces. Of course, I could always do a Control Z and step it back once, clear the mask, and now I have just a rock-like surface. If I want to check to see what this looks like as a render, I can use the BPR, and which is Best Preview Render, and I just can click the button, give it a second, and that's with well, that's it. Kind of reads the shadowing a little bit differently but it ends up being what we're looking for for something like that okay so that's really a quick easy way to create an environment piece that will you can turn around and fit in and you can augment you can actually take areas if you would like if we do shift d down a little bit i can mask this area let's take off this time we're going to do freehand and we're going to take that off i can now get this whole area in here Blur it out. Let's just change this to a red matte cap. I'm going to invert that. And now I'm going to use my move, which is M for move. And we can move uh, elastic, move topological, or just move. And in this case, we're just going to move it. And I'm going to just pull it up a little bit. There we go. I can hit S to change my draw size so I can pull it up a whole lot harder quicker clear that let's take a grayscale so you can make a really nice rocky moon-like surface pretty quickly using a little bit of noise one of the fun things you can do control N is you can actually take this model now this is an uh, this is an old model of mine, a very old model. I'm going to go ahead and just get into my standard brush. All right, so what I can do with this, if I go to my sub tool, I'm going to turn off the paint. This is this is poly painted, so I'm going to turn use this brush and turn it off, so we can see what this model kind of looks like from here. Again, let's let's do that little trick. We're going to do Control. I'm going to do a click drag and change this alpha to 8 and now I'm going to click and drag on areas okay there we go I want to get this whole big area in here like that there we go I'm going to invert that let's go to our noise let's scale it up a little bit there we go that looks good the strength Let's change, eh, that's probably a little bit severe. Let's scale it down a little bit. And then hit OK. No, nope, that's just a bit much. Let's go ahead and do the noise again. We're going to scale this up again, but we want this to be like ink, very, very small, very subtle. OK, let's do that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and apply this to the mesh. All 
right? And as you can see, it actually deformed the mesh. It deformed it, gave it these bumps, etc. So I can keep doing that deform, as you can see. I can deform it again. And what I'm doing is I've created this particular um, troll. I've given him this diseased look, maybe a zombified look. And it's all in the face. I can smooth some of that out a little bit if I want. There we go. I'm just holding down my shift. But you can get some really nice additional effects using some noise and some masking on different models, whether it's organic, uh, whether it's uh, something man-made, or whether it's like an environment. Very quickly, very easily, and just using, uh, using a few little parameters within the noise settings, and you get some really good effects right off the bat. It's definitely something worth checking out, and um, yeah, that really turned out nicely. I like it. I hope you guys did too. I hope you had fun with this. Again, my name is Stephen G. Wells, and this has been 3dmotive.com. Thanks for watching.